Okay, so let's go a little further with the Matt Dill hunting car keys analogies. Now, somewhat successful, but I can see by my interactions with certain people that a lot of you aren't getting it. Now, I haven't heard from the high-level atheists, um, who I'll even put JB in high-level atheist. Yeah, JB's high-level atheist. High-level atheists are honest engagement. They are actually listening to what I say, and they're engaging to what I actually say. The low-life douchebag atheists are just dismiss, disbunk, dis dis discredit. That's the only thing they're trying to do. They barely listen. And I can tell by their comments that they don't really, they're not listening to, to learn and understand. They're just listening till they hear something they can object to. Then they go, aha, see, you're wrong. Dismiss, disbunk, debunk, discredit. They think that's their only goal. High-level atheists understand that their goal, if you have assigned me the burden of proof, that on some levels they w will accept the epistemic responsibility to engage honestly with what I am telling them and try and ascertain the truth value of what I'm saying. Now, it's my firmly committed belief that if you listen to me honestly and engage with what I'm saying for real, I'm going to be able to make this true, my beliefs true to a whole lot of you. It's not going to be all that complicated. Why? Because I understand the mechanics of what actually produces the belief. Now, it's relatively complicated, but it's not rocket science, and it's not something that most atheists can't easily understand. So let's go back to Matt Dillahunty. Matt Dillahunty, when he was a Christian, had a couple of low-resolution spiritual experiences. He has described them himself. I am not saying anything that he hasn't said. Make that clear to some people because they seem to think that I'm, you know, falsifying his testimony. I'm not. I'm paraphrasing his testimony of what he has described through his own words. And his testimony, he has had small, low resolution spiritual experiences. Now, somebody offered to me that he was indoctrinated at the time when he was a Christian and now, and he walked away from his indoctrination. I accept that he was indoctrinated. That's basically true. What does it mean to be indoctrinated? It means that he had a small resolution, low resolution spiritual experience. Couple nights in question, he, he had these experiences that he thought was the Holy Spirit. And his environment told him it was God. That is a form of indoctrination. I agree with that. They said his family told him it was God, his church told him it was God, his friends told him it was God. So at the time, he was 150% convinced it's God. Now, from his position of 20 years past the experience, or 30 or whatever, he looks back on that experience and says, there's no way it was God. Why? A form of indoctrination. Yeah, indoctrination that he brought upon himself through the books he's read and the people he's hung out with, but it's still a form of indoctrination. His environment now tells him there's no way it was God. He hangs out with atheists. He reads atheist books. He goes on atheist chat shows. He goes to atheist lectures. His environment is telling him there's no way that experience was God. So now he says there's no way that experience was God. And what I am telling you, the honest seeker of truth, is that it's too low a resolution version of the experience to say for sure one way or the other. Now, when I came to my Christian belief, I have high-resolution, high-grade versions of spiritual experiences. This is something I can actively teach to anybody listening to me. They aren't that complicated. It's not that hard to do. You can have a low-resolution spiritual experience and through a process of cultivation, easily turn it up to 100 so that it's a high-resolution, high-definition version of the exact same experience. Now, you can have an experience at a really high re resolution version of it and still decide it's not God. Sure, that's your prerogative. As I pointed out in my other videos, my sister, in fact, did that very thing. I took her to my own church and she went and had a really, really powerful experience, so much so that she started crying, accepted Jesus on the spot. Is she a Christian now? No. She'd probably describe herself as a nun. Is she a believer in God now? I'm not sure. Probably not. <laughs> How does she reconcile her experience 
How does she t tell herself what happened that day? I don't know how she explains it to herself. That's not my issue. All I'm telling you is it's possible to have a high resolution, high octane, fully, fully powerful, fully realized version of a spiritual experience and still decide it's not God. If, if I lead you to that experience and you decide it's not God from that point, you have my blessing. As I say, be an atheist with a clear conscience. You, honest to God, don't believe in God, and you left no stone unturned. But if you're listening to my videos, and you're telling me, provide the evidence, and you're assigning me the burden of proof, I, then you are going to participate in the, the, the videos that I lay out, and you're going to have that experience for yourself before you tell me I don't believe. Prior to that, you have left, you have left stones unturned. You are not following the instructions that I'm laying out, which will evidence to you the reality of what I'm saying. I think that was pretty clear. Maybe it wasn't. Now, a word on symbolic realities, because that's what ultimately this all goes down to. There is a part of this that is by definition subjective, but the part for the atheist that you don't recognize because nobody else spelled it out quite as clearly as I am going to. There is a place in reality where the subjective and the objective meet in actual fact, actual reality. Think of a placebo. What's a placebo, Craig? A placebo is something that works because you believe it is going to work. It is an objectively verified, scientifically verified fact that there is such a thing as a placebo effect. What is it? Simply this. You take something that you really, honest to God, believe is going to work to help cure your pain a little, and because you believe it so fervently, it works a little. Ask any scientist anywhere on Earth if there's such a thing as a placebo effect. What is it? It's where the subject and the object of meet in reality. Now, as I tried to explain with the numinous experience, a numinous experience is something readily available to each and every one of you. You should have already had at least one or two in your life. If you didn't, doesn't speak highly of you. It's not, oh, cool, I'm so awesome and skeptical. No, it means your heart is not available to it. It's a, it's a normal human experience. Transcends all cultures on the face of the earth. No less an atheist than Christopher Hitchens has described the numinous, numinous experience. And last I checked, he was one of, the, one of the big top atheists. And he said, if you don't have a numinous experience, I don't really want to know you. Some, some variation on that. Numinous experience is really, really easy to have. If you haven't had one, I will have videos up in the future where you can produce one in yourself. It's a mundane, down-to-earth thing that almost everyone on earth has had to one degree or another. For purposes of this video, just to generalize it, I'll go into details in other videos. It is just a sense of awe at the profundity of life. That's how I describe it. Now, I've had those prior to me becoming a Christian. I've described some in my videos past. One of which I had in Italy, another one I had in England. When I came home from that particular European trip, the one I had in Italy, I told my mother about the experience. She said, yes, I totally understand that experience. An experience we are both describing as vaguely spiritual. That's it. That's our only explanation. We didn't say, we know that God is real and hallelujah Jesus. Neither of us are believers at this point. We're both agnostic. Okay? And I said, I had this experience that, and I described it as a numinous experience. And she said, yes, I've had that experience numerous times in my life. Of the times I've had it, in art museums, at concerts, symphonies, and in church. Those are the three places that she said that she had it. A common, everyday, mundane experience. It is the beginning stages of the religious experience. Now, that's an easy thing to have. And it's also an easy thing to learn the skills of cultivation that you can take the small version of that experience and turn it up to 100. So it's really powerful, really vivid, and really real. That's what I'm going to teach people how to do. There's a, a science to this. It's not rocket science either. It's not that complicated. It's really not. That's what I'm trying to say. Science ultimately is on my side. Why? Because science is about investigation of the truth. And as you'll see from my videos going forward, I'm going to tell you very little that you don't objectively know is true. For example, what I'm about to tell you right now about participating in rituals. 
symbolically participating in rituals, which is the very bread and butter of what religion actually in substance is, whether God exists or not. That is a reality that cannot be denied. Ritualized participation in the ineffable. That is something you can, you can understand clearly out of the context of religion. Where you take a subjective experience and engage with it in a form of ritual to make it more vivid and real. Oh, this isn't rocket science, Greg. Yeah, I understand that. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I don't really think this is going to be all that complicated and all that hard. And I think once I teach you all how to have a numinous experience, how to turn it up to 100, 85 out of 100 of you are going to believe it's God. Honest to God. I really do. I don't think it's going to be all that wildly complicated. So far in this video, go back on, I've said nothing that anybody would object to. Nothing that isn't predicated in actual reality, objective reality, actual facts. So, let's take the patriotic experience. You all understand what a flag is, right? American flag. Is it an actual representation of America? No, it's a symbolic representation. Is it America? Is it a tangible? It's a symbolic representation of America. Correct? You all understand this, right? Deconverted man, you get that, right? You don't have to empirically verify that it's a symbolic representation of America. You are, you are able to process that that's a symbolic representation, right? Because that's how you fall apart on other things. Honestly, it's really that out to lunch. A symbolic representation of America. Everybody understands this clearly, right? On the 4th of July, if you want to produce in yourself, sometimes the difference between conservatives and liberals as a rule is they participate in the rituals of Americana that actually subjectively produce more patriotism. And they're really easy to do. So every once in a while, I myself will get in a rah-rah America mood. And I'll put on like, you know, a guns and ammo type shoot 'em up movie. And I'll, you know, put on, on the 4th of July, I try to actively, I actively create this experience inside of myself on purpose and it usually works. And here's how it works and all of you will understand that there's a real process involved to this. It's not complicated. So say it's the 4th of July and you want to experience love of country and patriotism more vividly. What do you do? Really easy to produce the experience in yourself. You put on God Bless America, you put that song on a couple of times, then you watch something that gets you like psyched about America, maybe a, a World War II movie where we were the good guys and you're like, yeah, America, go! Something that gets you really, really jizzed out on USA. It's not that complicated. Then you put on like Yankee Doodle Dandy. Do you see how you are actively participating in rituals that are actively producing a subjective experience of patriotism that becomes more vivid by virtue of your participation, duh. Did I say anything rocket science? No, duh. Is this objectively verifiably true? Yes, obviously, duh. <laughs> Same idea. You want to become more patriotic on the 4th of July. There are steps you can take to produce more patriotism inside yourself. The reason why conservatives are generally more patriotic is they do this stuff more frequently. My wife is more conservative. She's more patriotic. My nephew is a Marine. God bless him. You know, he does this stuff all the time. Marines do this stuff every day. They get all excited about America and they, they ritualize it so they produce more and more patriotism and fervent patriotism. It's easy to produce. It becomes a tangible reality. It's easy to produce an experience inside of yourself, subjectively real, and turn it up by virtue of participation. You cannot turn it up inside of yourself without participating in the rituals. I, I really honestly think that was 100% crystal clear, but I think I'm going to leave it at that for now. There's more, to, there's more on this to come, but I want you to clearly think about that, because that's really important when we start talking about religion itself. And that's a context outside of religion. So you don't have to get all stressed out. Oh my God, oh my God. Uh, Maybe some of you get stressed out on patriotism just as badly. But you understand how this works, the mechanics of it, right? You want to make yourself feel more fervently patriotic. There are steps that you can take and you can participate in rituals that people who are more patriotic participate in more frequently, which will subjectively make you more in love with America easily. 
Fourth of July, a lot of people do this. They put flags up all over their apartment. They get all, you know, psyched on USA, USA. And by virtue of the fact that they are producing in themselves, they are participating rituals that are producing a subjective, powerful, internal experience inside of themselves, they are actively turning up the volume on that experience. You can't do it without participating in the rituals. Do you understand? It's not really that complicated. But I think that already may be, some people might be struggling already, so I'll slow it down. I will break this down for you. This is not going to be rocket science, people. Nothing I said in this video is rocket science. Nothing I said in this video, if you don't understand what I said, go run it by your intelligent friends and ask them if they understand it, because they will. It's not, that, it's not that complicated. If you're struggling to understand what I just said, that's kind of on, probably on you, because you're not trying to listen and understand. You're trying to debunk, dismiss, discredit. That is the wrong way to listen. If you have assigned me the burden of proof, then listen to what I am trying to say and try and actively participate in understanding it. Because from here, everything I'm about to teach everybody is going to flow organically. It's really easy to do. It's not that complicated. There is a, such a thing as a spiritual experience. This is, not, this is not, you know, Craig thinks that little Martians paint the wall and he just believes it by faith. Craig said he thinks little Martians paint the wall at night, and he just believes it by faith. It's never what I said. This is what you guys, a lot of times you guys act like I say. I said there's such a thing as a spiritual experience. Everybody knows this, including Christopher Hitchens. A, one way of thinking about it is called a numinous experience. Christopher Hitchens himself, atheist upon atheist of all, atheist upon atheist, most definite embodiment of the atheist, has said, He's had numinous experiences. If you hadn't, he's not so sure if you're worth even engaging with. Some variation on that. Look it up. You don't believe it. Google it. It's an easy thing to have in life. When I was talking about this in, to another atheist, he said, oh, I've had it at rock concerts. You can have it at rock concerts. Reality check. That's what I said. It's an easy thing to have in life. Yes, you can have it at rock concerts. I've had a bunch. I've had it at a bunch of rock concerts. Santana was the most intense one. Santana, I saw him in the, where I see him? On the pier in Manhattan. It's a very good place to see a, rock, a show, by the way. Santana might be, people might not know who they are anymore. The guitarist was excellent. Carlos Santana is an excellent guitarist. And live, they're phenomenal. He jams out half the time. And it's, it takes you to another place. That's exactly how I would describe it. It took me to another place. And I was, uh, I forget what drugs I was on. <laughs> yeah, I, was, uh, I forget. I don't remember at the time. But it took me to another place. That's exactly how most people describe these type of experiences. They're easy to have. You can have them at rock concerts. Had them at a G Guns N' Roses concert. Had them at a Chili Peppers concert. Had them at a Public Enemy concert. Public Enemy is the best concert I ever saw, by the way. Red Hot Chili Peppers second. And then, I don't know. I haven't seen that many concerts. Honestly, I don't like concerts all that much. <laughs> I really don't. I, 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 I've gone to maybe 30 in my entire life. So, anyways... In the videos to come, I will explain to you the mechanics of, pr of producing a numinous experience in yourself. It's not that complicated. It's easy to do. A spiritual experience. Remember, you don't have to decide that this is God. Nobody's pressuring you to accept this as God. Nobody's pressuring you to do anything. You don't have to join my church. It'd be nice if you tithed. <laughs> you know, it'd be nice. <laughs> but nobody's pressuring you to do it. So you can all relax and just participate in the videos as I lay them out without trying to debunk, dis dismiss, discredit, quick, 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 bust his ass. Stop doing that on this channel. Stop. I'll tolerate it for a few months, and then I won't tolerate it at all. Then you've got to be an honest atheist, or you can't play here. And I'll, I'll call them out. I'll call out the honest atheists. You know, I do it all the time. Hopefully I won't have to start, to ha have to start calling out the douchebag atheists. But they're out there, and they're, they exist. And hopefully I will never have to come to that. So, a numinous experience to review is easy to have. You should have already had some in your life. Think more generally than you're thinking. You don't have to think at church. Think concert. I just told you one at Santana that I had forgotten about. Santana's rocking in concert. Honestly, it was phenomenal. Phenomenal guitarist live. You can't even believe it. It's, you know... People will say to you, they'll describe these in religion. It's a religious experience. It is kind of a religious experience. Hello? Yeah, it is. That's the point. Hello? Yeah. 
Numinous experience. It's not for, you know, Jesus rose from the dead. I experienced Jesus rising from the dead at church. It's not how church even works. It's a lot more down to earth, real to life than you are pretending that it is. Is there anything about a, me being blown away by a Santana concert that you find like really just from another planet that I have to literally prove it to you? Or does that sound mundane, down to earth, as, as real as basic reality? Everything I'm going to tell you is going to line up perfectly with basic reality. There's going to be no, it's not rocket science. It's like I'm telling you. You just don't see how the dots are connected. I do, and I'm going to connect them for you. You'll see for yourself. And then you can decide for yourself. Having all the available information at your disposal, having the experiences at your disposal, you can decide for yourself. Know the same for me. This isn't God. I don't know what it is. It's freaking me out, but it's not God. That's fine. Still, my job is to lead you there. And I'm going to do it. It's not going to be all that complicated. It's really not. So get ready, get ready, get ready, kids. That is all for now. The Mass has ended. Go in peace. Amen.